Hello everyone, I'm going to uh, do a real quick video to show you how to go about navigating the new Cirrus 2.0 platform. Uh, this will assume you've already created your account and already have your class linked to uh, the your, your account itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on sign in. And you should come to this very first opening screen which uh, has the active courses that you're signed up for. Uh, if you click this button, it will ask you for a join code. Please do not click that button. This will be the class that you need to log in. And you should come directly to this welcome page within the Cirrus 2.0 platform. I'll spend the majority of my time going through these individual tabs on the navigation bar. You can use this second bar as well to navigate, but typically you'll use these tabs running along the top. Uh, the course resources tab, you will not need to use this tab at all. The first tab that has a graded exercise in it is the Getting Started tab. The Getting Started tab only includes a quiz that checks your understanding of the activities that you will have watched in these Watch and Learn lessons. Most all of the tabs that you will work with and all of the chapters will have these Watch and Learn lessons. These Watch and Learn lessons are not graded and will not count against you if you do not complete them. So as you go through these, simply click on it, and in this case, you're learning how to adjust the monitor settings and changing the office theme. You'll notice that there's a video that's associated with this particular activity. You can scroll down through this page, and that video will actually move with you as you go through this page. If you'd rather not read through this, you can actually watch the video, and the video will walk you through this activity as well. Again, these activities are not graded and are not part of your overall score for the course. But if you go back to this tab, you will see again that you have this quiz. When you go to take the quiz, you'll simply click the Take the Quiz option, and it'll tell you the availability date and the end date for this, for this quiz. The quiz is due on August 25th by, mid, by uh, midnight. And it says I did complete the quiz on 8-22, so, and I have no remaining attempts, which is okay. Uh, the really neat thing about this application is that if you are completed with one of these exercises, you simply have to click the next button. It will take you to the next tab, which happens to be the Information Technology Essentials tab. This is similar to the Getting Started in that you only have one graded assignment, and that's this quiz that you take here at the bottom that, again, will cover the information that's covered in these Watch and Learn lessons. Now, I've already gone through both the Getting Started and the Information Technology Essentials quiz, so I'm ready to start looking at my Word assignments. Now, many of you will ask where your assignments are located. Where is my list of assignments to complete? The list of assignments is found inside each of the sections within each of these modules running across the top. The Word, extra, the word task, the Word uh, tab, rather, uh, is similar to the Excel tab, is similar to the Access, and is similar to PowerPoint. The layout is very similar between each of the applications. Normally, you'll have three sections. Uh, in this case, words, you'll have section one, section two, section three, and think about this as chapters in a textbook. Uh, so we'll look at section one first. And section one, again, has some watch and learn lessons. Uh, Again, these do not count against you. These activities uh, 1.1 through 1.14, they do not count against you, but they will help you perform better on the quizzes, on the Check Your Understanding quiz, as well as the concepts exams that you will have for each chapter or for each section within these applications. So the, the, again, the activities are not graded, but they will help you score better or higher on the following exercises. The first graded assignment for Word Chapter 1 or Section 1 is this quiz, which checks your understanding of the activities that you will have gone through uh, prior to this. So the quiz uh, does count against you if you do not take it. You then have some guide and practice tutorials, which are, again, great. Everything from check your understanding down through the project exams all consist of grades that will be populated in your gradebook. So it does count against you if you do not do each of these exercises uh, in these tutorials. So once you've completed a quiz, and it's again a multiple choice, true, false type quiz, uh, normally 15 to 20 questions, and your grade will be assigned as soon as you complete that quiz. The guide and practice tutorials, we'll go ahead and click on that one, normally will consist of a group of, uh, a group of exercises, uh, and we'll simply launch it here by clicking this launch guide and practice tutorials. 
And this guide and practice tutorial I've already completed, so you'll see that all of them have turned green. Uh, the links themselves will be blue if you have not completed it. You'll also see an individual grade, but these grades are a little misleading. This entire section of guide and practice tutorials was actually worth about 60 points. So once you complete all of these successfully and they all turn green, you will have scored 60 points uh, out of this. Okay, so you see I'm, down here I've miss, I'm missing two of them. So I don't quite have all the points that I could have. I could go back and complete these last two tasks uh, in these last two tutorials uh, and score those additional few points. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. And the guide and practice tutorial will load. And you simply click the begin. Now the way a guide and practice tutorial works is that First, a voice will, will play or will speak to you uh, along with the instructions and it will tell you the tasks that you are to complete. So I'll go ahead and click on begin. Create a folder at the open dialog box. Okay. Typing BEA specials as the folder name. One, click the new folder button. Okay, and it will wait for you to click the folder button. So it'll guide you through the exercise. And if I click the folder button, Incorrect. oh, Try look, I clicked the wrong one. So I'll click on new folder. Two. Type BEA specials and then press the enter key. Notice that I'm spelling this one incorrect. Okay. Once I press the enter key, it'll tell me that I got it incorrect. And then because I misspelled it, one, click the new folder button. I'll start it again. Two, type BEA specials and then press the enter key. Okay, now that I spelled it correctly, it Here's should accept it. Typing BEA group plans as the new folder name. Three, click the organize button. Okay, and if I don't know where the organize button is, I can ask for help. Three, click the organize button. There we go. So it'll show that I've clicked the organize button. So I'll go back and try it. Three, click the organize button. Four, click the rename option. Then I'll look and find the rename option. I click it. Five, type BEA group plans and then press the enter key. Incorrect. Try again. Notice again that I misspelled the name. Five. Type B four. Click the rename option. Incorrect. Try again. Five. Type BEA group plans and then four. Click the rename option. Five. Type BEA group plans and then press the enter key. Delete the BEA group plans folder. Six. Click the organize button. Try again. Seven. Click the delete option. Close the open dialog box. Eight. Click the close button. Congratulations. You have completed the guide section. Now practice and develop mastery by going to the practice section. Now, once I've completed the guided piece, now it lets me actually go through the graded piece. The practice piece is actually what is graded for you going through this exercise. Now I'm simply going to skip through this thing. I don't care to go through it. Uh, although we could certainly do that. So I will close my application, close my task list, and go back to my list of my guide and practice tutorials. Now I've not completed that one so I didn't get credit for it. So I'll close that tab back out and now it'll take me back to my guide and practice tutorials. Now in that case I just simply close the the tab that that guide and practice tutorial was opened in and it'll bring me back to the tab for Cirrus 2.0. So once you complete the guide and practice tutorials which are graded simply cycle through to the next exercise. The next exercise are the two section one exercise, exercise one and exercise two. So we simply click launch exercise one and you'll see that you have an attempt button here uh, in my case, I've already completed this once, so I will get a reattempt opportunity if I want to try it again. You will, the very first time you try to access one of these assignments, you will see an option that says Validate Office 365. Click here. You must validate your Office 365 account utilizing your Wallace State student email and your Blackboard login password. Once you've completed that, you'll come back to this tab and this button will be orange and it'll say uh, attempt attempt exercise. Uh, once you've clicked that exercise attempt button, it will load up and it will take you through those steps. I will go through this loading process. Normally it takes maybe five to 15, five to 10, maybe 15 seconds to load up. 
Uh, it can be longer or shorter depending on the speed of your internet connection. So we'll let this one cycle through until it gets to the starting point. Uh, and then we will look a little bit more at the interface itself. So we will see how long it takes and eventually it loads up. Most of you will want to choose the full screen option so we'll go ahead and click on full screen. Now it shows that it's loaded in full screen and part of my window is a little bit hidden so I'll, I'll open it back up. Now in this case uh, to start the exercise I would just simply click on next but before we do we'll, let's take a look at the action tool legend down here at the bottom. This first option is a menu bar, a menu, it's normally called a hamburger menu because of these three lines, and I'll show you where that is once we actually start the exercise. If you see the light bulb, that tells you that the help option is active and is available. You can also then move the task bar around uh, by clicking the lower right hand corner or simply clicking and dragging it. You can also use these uh, command buttons this next button will take you to the next task and then the check answer button will allow you to check the task now notice in this set option in this case it says to select the check answer when all of that tasks have been completed and it will cycle through and check all of the exercises that you would have completed during that uh, attempt so let's go ahead and click on next and in this case it tells me that I have four tasks that I have to be that I have to complete and because I've already completed this once I only have two attempts remaining because I've already scored 100 points on this exercise, it really doesn't matter what I score on this one because that highest point value is what's going to be retained in the gradebook. So it'll also tell me that my Cirrus help has been enabled. I'm ready to click on begin. Okay, so here we go. Again, we can click and drag this task instruction box anywhere on the screen that we want. You'll notice that the help option is turned on. Now, I want to warn you. The help option will tell you the answer key for this exercise. Do not get used to having this because in the higher point value assessments, the help is turned off. So the intent is to provide you help if you need it, but do not come to rely on that to be able to answer these questions. Because again, the intent is for you to learn the exercises and learn the tasks that you need to uh, know how to do these exercises correctly. For those of you that are using a Macintosh computer or a Mac, you will in some cases have to use keystrokes for key and utilize keys that are not found on a Macintosh keyboard. In those cases, you have this on-screen keyboard that you can simply click on, and if it tells you to click on the alternate key, the control key, and then the X for whatever reason, you'll click those three keys, and when you click the third key, that keystroke will be registered by the system and it will recognize that you clicked Control plus Alt plus X. The Windows systems don't require this because you have the Windows keyboard. So you can close the keyboard back out uh, if you don't need it. And again, most cases you won't, but if you do, it's always available to you in that upper, uh, on that upper bar. Now it's not available in every exercise. Some of the guiding practice tutorials do not have the on-screen keyboard, but for these higher graded value uh, assignments, it will be available to you. It's not considered part of the help, so it will always be available to you. You can also turn on voice narration. If you need voice narration, it's available to you. Here's that hamburger menu we talked about a few minutes ago that will have some uh, navigation options for you, as well as the activity tools that we talked about a little while ago. There's another way for you to get your on-screen keyboard. There's your help, which is your answer key. You can also reset the document if you make a mistake and just simply need to go back and try it again. So we're going to close this task back out. And here is your next option. Now notice I haven't done this exercise. I haven't done this task. I'm going to completely ignore it because I don't know how to do it. I'm just going to cycle on through it. I'm going to click all the way through to task number four of four. Once you've completed task four, then you click this button that says check answer. Now, I intentionally did not answer anything correctly so that I could show you how the grading system works. It goes through and it checks each of those four tasks in this case, and it will develop for me a, a feedback mechanism that will tell me what I did not do correctly. It'll mark it as incorrect, and on the last page of this document, it will show me what my results for this assessment are. Now, I have the option of resetting, returning, or finishing this exercise. If I click finished, it will grade it, and in this case, I will uh, be awarded a zero for this exercise. 
But again, that's okay because I still have another attempt remaining if I need to go back and do it again. Now, resetting the document is supposed to reset the entire attempt, which means you'll have to go all the way back through exercise one, uh, steps one, two, three, and four again, and then check the answer again. I'm going to go ahead and click on finish because I'm satisfied that I don't really uh, need this attempt, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and let it grade. Now, here is all of the tasks that I did not complete, showing me that I didn't complete it accurately. Once you are completed, Make sure you click this finish review and return to the activity page. Make sure you click that button so that it will actually post the grade or post the attempt. This, by the way, is not your grade book. I'll show you the grade book here in just a few minutes, but this simply shows you the attempts and the point values that you were awarded for each of those attempts. So I'll close out this window and I'll go back to my assessment tab. So once you've completed exercise one and exercise two, you'll click next and you'll go to the next set of assessments within Microsoft Word Chapter 1. And the Chapter 1 has a concepts exam. This is a multiple choice true false uh, exam or quiz. Again, it's got 10 or 15 or 20 questions, very similar to the check your understanding uh, back at the beginning. But again, this concept exam uh, will, will test your knowledge of all of the concepts that you've learned in Chapter 1. So it really is helpful and in most cases necessary for you to go through those watch and learn activities even though they do not in and of themselves uh, count against you. This is where that knowledge of those watch and learns is tested. Once you're finished with the word section one concepts exam, there's a skill check exam. The skills check exam is similar to the projects uh, but again, it uh, has uh, maybe five or six tasks or a few more uh, for you to complete as well. So it's similar to the project exam. You click next and you will have, finally, you'll have two section uh, project exams. These project exams are live in application exams. Uh, you will launch it very similar to the exercise we uh, saw just a moment ago that we walked through. You will check your uh, answers at the end of the exercise and your grade will be populated into the gradebook. You'll come back and complete project exam two the same way and then you click on next to take you to the next section. Once you've finished up word section one you'll then move into section two. Again section two and all of the other sections all of the tabs are laid out for the most part the same way. There's watch and learn activities, there's check your understanding quizzes, practice assessments, uh, assessments themselves and again all of these activities from check your understanding down through the, the quiz here all the way down through the project exams have point values associated with them so it is critical that you do all of these exercises because they will count against you if you do not complete them once you've completed all of this word chapter 2 you can then move on to word chapter 3 okay once you've completed word section 3 and the quiz, the practice and tutorials, the exercises, again, graded exercises. Then you can go back and you can complete the word final assessments. And there are fewer of these, but they are worth more points. So in this case, you'll notice that I've already started an attempt on my word final assessment. You'll notice that I have a, notice I have a suspended attempt, which simply means I did not complete it. If you see this resume your attempt, it means that grade is not populated yet because you've not yet submitted it. So normally you'll see a, a button that will say click here to launch the uh, assessment. All right. And you'll click it, you'll start it, you'll go through it, you'll answer all your questions, and you need to submit it. Once it's submitted, then your grade will populate and it will say you have completed an assessment, uh, you have one attempt remaining or no attempts remaining. Notice again that you also have availability end dates. This particular assessment closes on September the 11th with all of the other word assessments. So make sure you complete all of your word assignments by September the 11th. You'll then also have a final skills check exam, which again is very similar to the skills checks uh, exercises that you saw in the chapters 1, 2, and 3. Then you'll have a word final project exam. The word final project exam is simply a longer exercise than the skills check exam. Uh, so these are very, while they're very similar, the point values can be quite a bit different. Okay, we then click on next, and this would, should cycle us over to the Excel menu. 
Now, before you begin the Excel assess assessments uh, going through the same process we did earlier, do not forget that you have a Word meta major project that you must go back to Blackboard and complete. Once you've completed it in Blackboard, now you're ready to start in the Excel section of the course. Once you've finished Excel, you'll go through the Access portion, then you'll go through the PowerPoint exercises. Again, these exercises will have the due dates associated with them. Uh, so if I take the quiz on any of them, it'll tell me that October the 11th is the availability end date for Excel. Everything in Excel is due by October the 11th at midnight. Once I go to Access, I can click on any assessment in Access, and it will show me the uh, availability due date for Access. Access will close on November the 11th. Finally, PowerPoint. PowerPoint only has two graded sections and the final assessments. The, work, the PowerPoint uh, assessments will close in December on, guess when? December the 11th. So go through these sections. You will have a meta major project for Word that's in Blackboard. You will have a meta major exercise in Excel, which is to be completed in Blackboard or uploaded to Blackboard. You'll complete it in the Excel application itself. And you will have an, a meta major project in PowerPoint that you will complete in PowerPoint and upload to a assignment link in Blackboard. This integrating applications uh, tab uh, is completely bonus exercises, which means anything that's graded that would normally be graded in the other tabs will have similar grades, but these are all considered bonus points. These bonus points are not counted against you if you do not complete them. For those of you that may have missed the Getting Started or the Information Technology Essentials quiz, or you just forgot to take one and those have now been closed, these integrating applications bonus points can really help you pull your grade back up. Okay, finally the gradebook. The gradebook typically is going to be um, looked at through this grid view. In the grid view, you'll see your name, in this case my, my name is Terry Test Ayers, and it will show me the, assi the assessments that I have completed and the grades that I have been awarded for each of those graded assessments. So in this case, I've got 8.25 points on one word section one project. Uh, to the far right of the grade book, as you scroll all the way to the right, you will see this grade to date column. The grade to date column shows me how many points I would have earned so far in Cirrus. Now don't forget, this does not include those meta major projects which are only graded over in Blackboard, but this grade will tell you how close you are to passing this course. Now if you recall, in Blackboard there is a grading scheme that is posted. In order for you to make a C in the class, you have to hit a certain number of points. Well here is how you find out how close you are to the point value that is needed to pass the class or to make an A or to make a B or to make whatever grade that you want to make in the class. This total point value plus the points that you earn in Blackboard for those three meta major projects will dictate what your grade is in this course. You don't have to ask me for an average. You don't have to ask me how am I doing in this class. Find this total grade to date. Add to it your point values for the grades in the meta major projects in Blackboard, and you will know how you are doing in this course. So that's really all there is to uh, Cirrus 2.0. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, all of these tasks, all the tabs should now be available without any issues. But if you do run into a problem, please shoot me an email in Blackboard and let me know specifically the name of the exercise that you're having problems with. And uh, for an example, let's say I have a problem with uh, the skills check exam uh, for ch Word Chapter 1. Tell me on Word Section 1 skills check exam, I have a problem with task number 12, 13, and 14. I think I did it right or whatever the case may be. Uh, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Now the first thing I will do is look to see if you've actually completed the guiding practice tutorials. If you skip the guiding practice tutorials, I'm probably not going to answer your question because what you probably did wrong is not having gone through those guiding practice tutorials to see how they expect you to do those exercises and those tasks. So please make sure you do the guiding practice tutorials 
before you come and take any of these skills check exams or any of these project exams or any of these um, uh, assessments, make sure you go through the guide and practice first. It really will help you out. So good luck and let me know if I can be of any help.